Hey guys, welcome back. So today I thought why not dive deep into the minds of K-pop stands. I mean, honestly, what else are we gonna do? Um, so yeah, I just asked you guys on Instagram to send me your deep, dark K-pop confessions and I envisioned maybe it could be remotely entertaining for me to react to them here on this channel. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So you guys gave me some really amazing replies. Honestly, I can't wait, so let's just dive into them. Let's go. <laughs> I used to wish that I die and then get reborn Korean. <laughs> well, damn. It looks like we're just starting off strong. First off, I hope you don't wish to die. Just trying to address that right off the bat. Um, and secondly, I definitely think... No, actually, I know that you are not the only one to have wished to be Korean. Honestly, K-pop stands are fucking weird, and it gets to that point... Um, luckily, it never got to that point uh, for me, so <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I'm British, and none of my friends know I listen to K-pop, and I never mention it. I used to be the exact same way, except you're British, and I'm not British. I'm American, and being from the western side of the globe, I think most of us can congregate and accept the fact that, you know, we were all embarrassed at one point, and there was a time when, you know, liking K-pop to us was weird. And, you know, we were a little bit, you know, insecure about liking K-pop. Um, I personally thought everyone would think I was weird or like, I don't know, an outcast or something for liking Korean pop music. And eventually I got really lonely and I sort of just said, you know, fuck it and started wearing K-pop merch in public and posting about K-pop songs on my Instagram story. And yeah, locals probably thought I was annoying, but what's important here is that people DM'd me and like came up to me and I made friends from it and now I'm 3,000 times more happy Basically, what I'm saying is that amazing things can happen when you start embracing what you love. I hated twice for years, parentheses, joined hate bandwagon, and now they're in my top girl groups and I regret it so much. Ah, yes, here we are. I actually have another confession from someone else who said they used to hate Red Velvet, so we'll go over that now. Someone said I used to hate everything from Red Velvet, but now they're my ults. I relate to both of these confessions hard. I did not like Red Velvet because I thought they came across as rude and stuck up, and I found the cute concepts from Twice unbearable. But a few months later, I saw, I heard, and I learned more about both of these groups, and now I love both groups so much. I think all K-pop stands can agree that time is truly our best friend, okay? I don't like how everything is about streams. Well, that makes two of us. Um, I hate the pressure to stream. I hate when people like force it down my throat like I just have hours of my day to just sit on a computer and let videos play. Like I have work to do. Like I am a student. There are things that need to be done. Um, it's just such a waste of time in my opinion. Like it just, I don't care about the views. They mean nothing to me. You could have a billion views, you could have two views and I wouldn't care. I don't know why, but I can't stand Somi. We can't like everyone, I guess. There are definitely a lot of people that don't like Somi, which I find so interesting. I don't really have a personal problem with her, but I do get how she has this personality that some people probably just don't vibe with. There's like this girl from my high school who is so similar to Somi. It actually, it's uncanny how similar they are. But yeah, I never did like that girl very much, so that's that. <laughs> I thought K-pop was a type of food. I don't even really know what to say to this. Um, I hope you at least thought the food was good. Let's hope so. When looking for groups, I look at the members and see if I like them instead of listening to the music first. This does not surprise me one bit. I actually kind of fall subject to this as well because, I mean, a part of standing the group, yeah, you do have to enjoy the music, of course, but, you know, you want to follow these idols. You want to like them. You want to enjoy looking at them and watching them perform. So, yeah, this doesn't really uh, surprise me. JYP is the best out of the big three. What is there to confess here? I don't really know. This is just a fact to me. Next. I used to think Jimin and Jen were the same person when I first started standing BTS. This is so funny to me because Jimin and Jen were actually my first two biases. First it was Jimin and then I went straight to Jen. And they both have those full lips. So I mean, I can attest to this one. They do kind of look alike. I solo stan a few idols. I feel like a lot of people do, but they don't say it because there's this huge stigma around solo stands because a majority of them are annoying. But I personally don't think, 
you know, it's that big of a deal. As long as you're not putting anybody else down, you better live your life. I mean, who am I to stop you? I don't like Jisoo's voice. I don't think there's anything wrong with not liking someone's voice. I mean, everybody is allowed to have their own opinion as long as you're not hating. That's sort of the moral of the story here. I mean, there are some idols' voices that I'm not too keen on, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, I personally love Jisoo's deep, raspy voice. It's very unique to me. And no, she's not like the best singer in the world, obviously. But I mean, come on, she's improving every day and I'm here for it. I used to think every idol was under one company. I'm telling y'all that when I first got into K-pop, I don't even think I knew what a company was. Honestly, I don't think I knew much of anything at that point, so this doesn't surprise me. There's been some bops this year, but overall this year has had generic music. Somebody said it. I 500,000% agree with this. I honestly took 2018's blessings for granted. Like we had Boss, What is Love, Bad Boy, I'm So Sick, Starry Night. Like what? We were truly living in an era of greatness. But this year, y'all, oh God, it's been a little bit dry and kind of underwhelming if I'm honest. I used to write cringe-worthy fanfics. Listen, you cannot be a true K-pop fan. You cannot call yourself a K-pop stan if you have not done this. We've all been there, and honestly, fanfics are what keeps this fandom interesting. Like, if you're ever bored, go on Wattpad and just dive right into one story. These K-pop stans do not mess around. I love it. <laughs> when I was like 11, I cried because I knew I, <laughs> because I, knew I wouldn't marry Jungkook. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this kills me because this is so cute but also relatable at the same time like we all have that moment when we realize like shit our biases don't even know we exist and uh the likelihood of us ever meeting them is slim to none i keep having dreams about idols lol i have had so many dreams about idols that i cannot even explain every one of them has been so random like i had this one dream lucas and i went to high school together and we were in the bathroom together and he was like watching and say i don't even fucking know and then i had this other dream that yeri was my uber driver <laughs> honestly i wish i had explanations but ugh, it's just not possible and this leads me to another confession about a dream they say i once had a dream where taehyung was a dog and he bit me <laughs> i don't honestly i don't understand how taehyung could like form into a dog but honestly i'm jealous because that sounds kind of fun the whole it took me a few listens to enjoy it is just forcing yourself to like a song because it's your faves release well damn i feel attacked because in a way this is so true like normally when an artist releases a song that i don't like i just move on with my life for example ariana grande released don't call me angel which is not my cup of tea so i just simply you know moved past it but in k-pop it's like i have to force myself to like a song because most of the time i'm watching the live stages and the fan cams it's basically brainwashing speaking of washing um this person says i personally love whitewash here's a piece of advice that may serve you well in your life some things you just gotta keep to yourselves this is an example <laughs> Kai and Jenny were just a publicity stunt on the low key. Thank you a thousand times over because this is exactly what I believe to be true. It was just a publicity stunt. At this time, Jenny was being called lazy and there was tons of shit going on in YG Entertainment. So I, I have a theory that YG and SM put their heads together to make up this elaborate little plan. Um, honestly, it just makes zero sense. I made my teacher play a K-pop song in class once. At least I've learned my lesson now. Oh, this makes me want to cry. This makes me so sad. I'm so sorry because I can just like imagine your teacher being like, okay, class, does anyone have a song they want to play for everyone? And you're like, yeah, play Fancy by Twice. And then everyone starts laughing at you. Yeah, I'm having some dark middle school flashbacks. So we need to abort this one as fast as possible before I have a meltdown. I listen to Jim and Moans daily. Yeah, and you know what? You're probably not the only one, realistically. Sometimes in life, you just gotta have that one thing that really kickstarts your day. And if listening to Jim and Moans is that one thing, well, you know what? Get your life, accept it, embrace it. And uh, yeah, at least you're not going around killing people. So that's a positive. <laughs> I don't see the hype around Everglow. They just seem like a knockoff Blackpink to me. I think 
Everglow's hype is due to the fact that they have a similar concept to Blackpink, actually. I think another confession here coming up summed up my thoughts about Everglow perfectly. This person said, Everglow are not copycats, they just follow the trend. Which makes so much sense. I mean, they're not a super unique group, if I'm honest, but they do follow the mold. They follow the trend of what makes a successful, likable girl group, and they're doing it well. So you know what? Best of luck to them. I just bought six albums yesterday for like $120. <laughs> this is actually me. Like, uh, I'm that one person who is so cheap. Like, I feel bad after buying anything, but then like I'll go and spend hundreds of dollars on K-pop albums and I'm unfazed. It doesn't make any sense um, and in no way am I promoting my toxic lifestyle. I used to be a Korea boo. Honestly, you guys, on the real real, I feel like a lot of K-pop stands used to have like korea boo tendencies and they just don't ever mention it like they're just too embarrassed to confess it i guess and if you guys have been with me for a minute you would know that i made a video uh way back when um about korea boos and everything wrong with them uh because i thought it was funny um but honestly months later i just feel bad for that and i deleted that video because it did nothing but spew negativity into the already negative climate uh, and I was not having that, but it's just the people that want to become Korean and, like, start to, like, get the surgery and actually, like, make them, like, fool people into thinking they're Korean that actually piss me off and scare me. But other than that, you know what? Live your fucking life. If you want to walk around saying Anyang Haseyo and, like, doing the little hearts, who am I to stop you? Like, yeah, it's cringy, but, you know, do what you have to do, man. I love you, dot, 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 that's it. Oh, y'all got me crying on a Thursday at 3 p.m. <laughs> I love you more. Eyes One just isn't my cup of tea. Actually, in the beginning, I was kind of on your side, whoever confessed this. Um, I didn't see the hype around Eyes One, and then one day out of nowhere, something just switched in my brain, and suddenly I was interested in them, and I was like, watching their crackhead like guide to videos on youtube at like 2 a.m so yeah and here we are today i literally love them uh and i think they're such a solid group and it breaks my heart to know that one day they will no longer be a thing like i don't even want to think about it uh but yeah i mean you're allowed to not like them i just think i love them a little too much <laughs> I get often criticized for liking Blackpink and it makes me feel like I shouldn't stand, but I love them so much. I don't think I've ever related to something more, um, except for the part where getting criticized for Blackpink. I don't really feel like I've been criticized for liking them, um, but I have been called basic and annoying for liking them, which I'm used to at this point. But for example, when I said Blackpink were my old girl group in a few videos back, a part of me did feel kind of uneasy about saying that, which is so stupid because I love those girls so much. But it's difficult when everyone is yelling in your face about how overrated, spoiled, undeserving, untalented, and problematic they are all the time. So I totally get where you're coming from. Sometimes I think that Chewie has no personality and she is just a pretty face. I remember when I first got into Twice, Chewie was so unlikable to me and I thought similarly to the way you think. I just think she's quiet and shy and there is nothing wrong with that. We expect these idols to be these charged up robotic like machines all the time and Chewie is not having that bullshit and honestly we have no choice but to stand. I thought that fan cafe was a local coffee shop where we would go hang out with our faves. <laughs> I had to include this one because this is so hilarious yet so true because when I first got into K-pop and I saw about fan cafes, I thought the exact same thing. But in reality, it's just this little forum, okay? A bit weird, but Jenny and Lisa make me aroused. I don't think that's weird at all, honey. K-pop made me hate the way that I look. Yeah, and you know what? You and me both, sweetie, because after I got into K-pop, I was like, oh shit, I think I'm fat. Like, I don't think I'm supposed to have roles here, okay? You start to compare yourself to these idols who have just ridiculously just unrealistic looking bodies to the point where it's just, it's, it's so unattainable for someone like me because over here in America, we have something called Taco Bell and it's just too important to give up those supreme Doritos Locos tacos. So you know what? I've accepted myself. <laughs> Kill This Love era was kind of disappointing. 
you're not wrong, okay? That era lasted like three minutes and it felt so rushed, but the song slapped in my opinion. The songs are what made the era great, but the concept wasn't too spectacular to me and uh, I just wanted more. I don't know. I perform choreo in my room and pretend I'm an idol in a group. <laughs> Y'all are keeping it real and I am loving it because, dude, I thought I was the only one that did this, okay? The people that live below me probably hate me because I'm in my room pretending I'm the 10th member of TWICE all day long. And you know what? I'm not ashamed, okay? All right, you guys, that was the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I feel like it's going to be a long video because I've already been recording for 20 minutes, but you know what? I had some things I had to address. You guys went in, and I'm so happy. <laughs> These confessions just made my day, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, and yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon with another one. Bye, guys! Bye.